How does it protect them? So, so other pets and bears don't get that. Is it like camouflage? Yeah. That's my favorite. Camouflage is your favorite? Yeah. Do you have camouflage? I do. What's your camouflage? My camouflage. See, my, my dress is camouflaging to it as well. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm going to sit in my car. I, I get claustrophobic, okay. so like this to me is like, are you going to be okay? So were you always claustrophobic? I'm not sure. I just like to know I can get out quickly. And I think it's just because I had so many opportunities to enter and exit in places, I got out of the school pretty quickly. So I think because of that, I've just always, that's been my survival mode is to look for multiple exits. So I do feel a little trapped if I don't have that moment of knowing I can get away. It just started like any unremarkable school day. I was in my choir room and we could see out of the, the window of the room some people running, but just didn't think anything of it until there was a loud boom. And that's when just chaos. You could hear kids like just a loud sound coming up from the commons area of the school. And so I started to go out one set of doors when a teacher stopped me saying, they're coming up, they're coming up. And so I just turned around and started to go out another door. You could hear the sound kind of from the lower commons area of and that's where we dropped in between the seats. We kind of crawled through the seats across the top of the auditorium into another set of doors into the main hall of the school. And we started to go out the front doors of the school when they shattered in front of us. And we just kind of froze and it wasn't until a teacher in another hallway waved us down and we were led outside to a route to safety. I was 16 years old at Columbine High School on April 20th, 1999. This would never happen again. This was an anomaly. And that's kind of what we were told. And I, I believe them. That's, that's all I could, because uh, adults were our leaders. And in, in my mind, that's a, I was like, I would trust my parents, I'll trust the adults. I kind of stayed on the sidelines. I just didn't want to get involved. I was using an outlet, and that was theater, and I was happy. But then once I had kids, it wasn't about me anymore. It wasn't finding outlets or band-aids. It was more, I need to protect my children. So they got me to fight. I think all of us grew up not feeling like we were the survivors because we weren't physically injured or obviously a victim. So I think for us, we just had to continue on. And as we kind of saw through life, there's all the aftershocks that occur. I joined Moms Demand Action after the Pulse shooting, but um, wasn't really active until Parkland occurred. It, was so eerily familiar, but this time the kids spoke out and I think it got me to finally, after almost just about 20 years, finally was like, you know what? I didn't know I had a voice either. So I realized that here I always hid from my own story, thinking it didn't matter. And I started to just speak the truth about me and just how I felt through all these years and kind of the post-traumatic stress you get, the weird little idiosyncrasies that you get and showing that even though you don't have physical wounds, there's still emotional wounds that you're dealing with. I look at all these new survivors and my heart aches knowing their journey won't be easy. They will grow a stronger determination to fight 
and to love. And my wish for them is that they will be spared the aftershocks that have wreaked havoc on my community. Unfortunately, because of how Columbine, how the media treated it all, the shooters were glorified. When these mass shootings occur, we don't need to know anything about them because this becomes their best day. Everyone looked first at mental illness and violent video games, bullying, and all these things are all a part of it. And if we could study it, that would be important too, that we need to fund the CDC to see if these are the answers. But we have a right to own a car, and there's a lot of regulation on cars, so let's do the same thing with firearms. And start looking at laws just to make it harder. You could keep fighting me, but if you see that there's an issue too, and these are your answers, what are you doing to change this? I come here and I do reflect like this is this is our future and you see how innocence does prevail and they're so innocent right now that they they don't need to go through what I went through at 16 and I think that's why I just keep fighting because it's not fair to them to have to deal with that. I want them to know that they can stick up for themselves and fight for what they believe in. It's not about me. It's not about my children. It's about all our children and their safety and their future. There's so many survivors now of gun violence. My biggest advice is to listen to their stories, say the name of those that have been lost out loud, and to truly honor those names with action. We've been sitting on the sidelines for far too long, and it's time to act and make change so we don't have to say more names. Cassie Bernal, Steve Kernow, Corey DePooter, Kelly Fleming, Matt Kector, Daniel Mauser, Daniel Rohrbaugh, Rachel Scott, Isaiah Scholes, John Tomlin, Lauren Townsend, Kyle Velasquez, and Coach Dave Sanders. I'm Sally Garrigan. I'm a Columbine survivor and a gun violence prevention advocate.